So what you're looking at um, there is that's Joe St. Ledger in a typical uh, railway enthusiast mode with not only one, but two uh, still cameras and his cine camera. Uh, the, the cine camera uh, was very much the one that you see in the picture here is the one that he recorded most of the scenes in the late 60s early 1970s but what i've picked out tonight are some of his super eight films so this is basically more or less from mid 1970s onwards so although most of the film shows i've done of joe's to date are covering the early 70s what you might call the cie black and tan era this is very much the super train era but nonetheless uh, if anyone is concerned that we don't have enough material from the early 70s believe me there's plenty more that joe uh shot and i'm present presently digitizing and um, i'll just give you a brief rundown just as you can see on the screen here in order to catalog all these films it's necessary for me to sit down watch them on a projector that's uh two two or three examples of city films so that's my projector there and i when when transferring, when you look at it on pure raw screen like that, Cinefilm doesn't look as good, but it's, when it's digitized, you can carry out a number of enhancements. So that's my basic listing of the scenes that Joe recorded, and that gives me an idea of the content on each film. And then I can put the films together and edit them into a finished product, as you'll see here tonight. So that's my 8mm Cine digitizer. Uh, it scans frame by frame. Um, automatically, although I do need to stand over to make sure that everything is uh, recording correctly. Um, so that's a standard uh, eight millimeter film that's been digitized at present. And you can see this frame by frame, more or less going through the scanner. Um, it takes sometimes up to nearly an hour just to do four or five minutes of footage. So once it's digitized, I can put it then into um, some uh, video editing software and you can see the contrast on the left on the right so i'm able to add stabilization and um, so the film isn't jumping around and then i can actually enhance the exposure and color as you see here that's joe himself walking the tracks uh, just around the clonmel area uh, when he was recording some uh, permanent way workings as you can see there with the sulzer engine with the ballast train and you can see the contrast in the exposure uh, so then the films are all listed digitized and then they're sliced together as if I was physically slicing them I'll do doing it in digital format and you can see that's the editor there with all the different films and you can see also the lower band is actually audio uh, of course as I mentioned this is all silent cine so I've added just background music uh, which I hope you'll like uh, it can be sometimes it's a variety of various uh, <laughs> instrumental kind of uh, songs and things so that is the films then in their final version once they're all labeled and packed away so the running order um for tonight's show is that we're going to start down on the railways of cork visiting mainly the yaw branch and seeing a lot of unusual workings as well as some regular last goods trains working over the branch in the late 1970s we'll then throw in our our bonus film for tonight i always include a bonus film and that's going to be of the Dublin Southeastern line as it was in the early 70s. In the second half of the show, we're going to go into the railways of Limerick and Kerry proper. And um, we'll be visiting places like Foynes, uh, as well as the Fina branch, uh, Killarney in particular. So places that we haven't really covered in any previous show uh, to date. Brilliant. Excellent. So we're just beginning just outside y'all, passing the distance signal for the terminus. That's GM Diesel 168 with a short goods working from Cork. That's it running around its train in y'all station. You'll notice that the engine is X Works, just recently repainted into the super train livery. These were all, scenes were all shot around June 1978. Um, we know for sure from the working timetable that the good service was withdrawn on the 2nd of June. And that's guard uh, Tom Ryan. I hope to speak to you later, Tom, if you're about. <laughs> 
here is dropping off a sundries wagon at the intermediate station at Mogili. These coach workings were Monday to Friday and uh, departing Cork at 9.15, serving Middleton and Mogili and arriving into Yall at 11.30. The return journey was made at 12 o'clock. And here we see the train going over the level, station level crossing in Middleton with just one single 20 foot container and a brake van. And here's the same train, just on a different day, arriving into Yall station. two sundries vans. You'll see the crane, the, those cranes were installed in the late 1960s for handling container traffic, but they're more like the smaller conflat containers, not well suited as you can see to handling um, you know, the standard ISO container, 20 foot container. So you can see there is a bit of a struggle to get it off the flat wagon. See 168 running around its train. Then collecting the containers from the from the goods yard. And then bringing two sundries wagons into the goods shed. It's an interesting era, the mix of the old um, sundries wagons with the with some of the appearance of the 20 foot container traffic kind of being more or less these kind of mixed workings of modern <laughs> and old stock. And that is probably the last goods working to party y'all. As you can see, he's run over um, a fog signal there, which is always an indication of the, the last regular service of a particular train leaving its uh, terminus. So I say that was recorded on the 2nd of June, 1978. And this is the train passing through Mogili. and entering Middleton. And departing Middleton. And last glimpse of it just passing through Cove Junction, or Glunton as it's called nowadays. But despite the withdrawal of the goods services in 1978, Yall remained an important beat loading location. So here we have an A-class with a laden beat train having just been loaded at the loading bank on the platform. Again, these were shot probably in the late 1970s. beach being loaded into the standard CIE open wagon. Unfortunately for y'all, the beat traffic uh, was withdrawn uh, from the y'all branch uh, in autumn 1982. So that was when the last time that the branch was in use uh, for regular traffic. And all these trains worked up to Cork and up the main line to Dublin to Turlet Sugar Beet Factory.
And here we have the same, well, same train, I think, having collected further wagons along the route and it's captured passing Dun Kettle. And that's a Dun Kettle station that you can see in the background, which is actually where Joe St. Ledger actually grew up. Uh, but it wasn't always um, A class as hauling the Colts train. Here we have a GM diesel. I think it's 158. Joining the main line at Cove Junction with a laden beat from Yall. This was shot before the junction here was remodeled. You can see it was still in its original double track layout. And then we have our first modern train uh, of this particular era. It's an ammonia tank train, probably recorded around uh, July 1978. Uh, I think these may well have been trial workings. The bogey tanks um, were first delivered to, um, from a French firm in, from, um, what company was it? Uh, I just don't quite have the name of it here, but um, was delivered to CIE, arriving at the Dublin port, uh, April, June, 1978. And here we have one of those ammonia workings passing through Dunkettle station. And you'll see that the, the formation was in six tanks with a barrier wagon at each end. Now, this is a view of the terminus at Cove uh, showing the original track layout, but taken during its rationalization in the early 1980s. And this is a GM diesel taking some redundant stock out of the former carriage shed. Uh, that's Cove uh, signal cabin there visible also. As you can see, the, the points were quite complex at Cove during this time, but it more or less was reduced just to uh, uh, just a double line running into the terminus and a run round loop. Um, I think regular goods traffic um, had ceased serving uh, Cove uh, in the early 1970s. And that's a local working departing Cove heading back to Cork, consisting of CIE Park Royal carriages. Um, so this is the track recording car EM50, or number 700, taken when it was fairly new. Um, around 1977, I think that they had been delivered in 19, February 1976. And this may well have been one of its first workings to, to Yall. So here we have EM50 arriving into Yall. It's one of the oldest uh, recording vehicles of its type, I think, still in service uh, in Europe. And I believe that the company uh, who manufacture it, which is uh, Placer and Terreur, actually want to purchase this vehicle um, for preservation. Here we have EM50 passing through Killa, heading back to Cork. and arriving into Middleton. It visited as much of the locations all around the Irish Rail Network uh, during the late 70s, 80s. Uh, and it's still, <laughs> in fact, I think one of its, I believe one of its last runs was only a couple of weeks ago. Um, now these are special passenger workings to y'all I think these are around 1980 and were run for the Pfizer company. So we have 085 having arrived in with a train from Cork. And that's guard Tom Ryan with his tail lamp.
Gus Gard again, Tom Ryan, working the ground frame just outside the, the station limits. I think uh, Yaw Signal Cabin um, had been closed by the early 80s. So the point works and signals were operated uh, on the electric train staff, which you saw uh, Tom was using. So 086 on this occasion, again with a Pfizer special, taking around 1980, leaving you all for Cork. And another special approaching you all just outside the town, passing the distance signal. That's 075, I think it is, running around this train. On that day, there's two specials. You can see the other one on the left. And set 075 passing through Killa on the return working. The track on the All Branch, although it had lost its regular passenger and goods services um, in 1963. The track obviously was still in fairly good condition to take the weight of the 071 class, but in later years, uh, the good rails were swapped out for much poorer ones. That's 088. Uh, because in addition to the Pfizer specials, you also have knock specials. And I think this one was an East Cork Legion of Mary pilgrimage special to knock and it's passing through Killa all around 1983-84 I think this was and arriving into Middleton so I'm fairly certain that was a, a knock special and joining the main line at Cove Junction. Passing Dun Kettle. Totally, this scene is totally obliterated by all the motorway uh, junctions that were built later there in, in the 80s and 90s. Now, here we have a, an RPSI steam special. This, I think, was the Cork 800 special with using J15 060 number. 184, an X Great Northern S Class 440, number 171, Sleeve Gullion. Here they are working hard out of Cork at Kilbarry. Twelfth of May, nineteen eighty-five, and this is a run past stage for photographers at Rat Duff. And here we have an extraordinary train, a train all the way from Derry, an 80 and Northern Ireland Railways 80 class rail car set made up of 12, 12 uh, 
Ireland's uh, carriages in total, that's including the power cars, uh, seen passing Kilbarry. Um, this train was run for an FAI por- quarterfinal cup match that was held in Flower Lodge in Cork City. 16th of March 1986, I believe it was the first time an NIR 80 class set visited Cork. It was organised by the Foyle Valley Railway Society and carried 800 passengers. So here we see the train being shunted in Cork and this is the return working, passing Rat Pekin. I'm afraid to say that Derry lost the match with just five minutes <laughs> towards the end, so their fans must have been pretty gutted heading all the way back home to Derry. Um, this is uh, taken on the 7th of September 1986. It's 076 with some NIR stock, which had been borrowed for today during uh, All Ireland Hurling final day. It was the 940 Houston to Waterford train. Obviously, there's a shortage of CIE stock on that particular day. So they borrowed a set from Northern Ireland Railway and was seen departing Kildare in that particular shot. That's just a normal up working. Now we're back onto the All Branch and we're going to have a look at the CIE weed spraying train. So that's, I think it's 186, I think, approaching Carrick Tool with the weed sprayer from Cork. Taken around 1985, 1986 passing through Biddleton and you can see with the engine it has a distinctive uh, yellow and black boards to warn permanent way staff uh, of the spray. And the man you see in the foreground there, that's Colm Creedon, a longtime friend of Joe St. Ledger's. Passing through Killa. and arriving into Yall. And the train is made up of the weed spraying set that was introduced, I think around 1977. That was just a glimpse of Colm Creedon again. 162 was the engine. And departing y'all, heading back to Cork. In later years, the weed sprayer didn't visit y'all at all, and I'm afraid to track. Uh, got into a terrible state, particularly uh, became very overgrown in sections. So this may well have been one of the last workings of the weed sprayer on the branch. As you can see, the, the grass covered tracks uh, passing through Carrick Tuhul. And joining the main line at Cove Junction. And although this, that particular weed spraying set is gone, the yellow tanks still survive. And as Shane can confirm, we only saw these yellow tanks on the Sperry train at this location uh, just three weeks ago. And departing Cork, heading up the main line towards Mallow at Kilbarry. Now this is, I believe, another knock pilgrimage special on the All Branch, pictured passing the distance signal. It's an A-class and it's made up of Mark II stock. I think the engine is 029. April 1986, I think it was. So this may well have been one of the last knock specials 
to visit the branch. Well, certainly to depart from Yall anyway. I know there is a, a later working from Middleton. So 029 runs round its train. And passing Bog Road level crossing. Approaching Middleton. This is the overbridge on the east side of Middleton Station. And passing through Carrick Tool. And passing Myrtle Hill, just on the outside of Cork City. And that's just a double headed train heading from the Dublin direction at Kilbarry. Now, during the 1980s, I mentioned the fact that some of the rails were replaced along the Yall branch, some of the good rails, and they were replaced with some rather inferior rails. So this is one of the trains that was sent out onto the branch uh, to swap rails, as well as to recover some track. And um, in some cases, uh, towards the end, in the late 80s, I don't think the track was replaced um, at all. So that was a shot of the rail train passing through um, Mogili. And this is it, uh, shunting, I think, local 151, shunting at the goods loop on the cork side of Killa, which is the only means by which an engine could actually run round its train. And that's lifting rails just outside the old town, again, near where the distance signal was. I think this was the 8th of July 1988. And passing through Mogili, heading back towards Cork, again local 151. This was another occasion of a rail train. This is how it's approaching, I think it's approaching character two with an A class. I think it was 007 with three flat wagons. Uh, July 1989 was this particular working. It's Mogili signal cabin. This time A class 001. This time with a single F rail, uh, rail wagon. I think Mogili had the distinction of having one of the smallest signal cabins in Monster. So lifting rails, I think, in the Killa Mogili section. And then repelling back to Mogili. I think with this time with it may well have been a different day, as you can see, that's 019. But I do know on some occasion they actually sent out two engines with, um, with separate wagons out along the branch. That's 019 running round the wagon in Mogili Station. And I think, is that 001? Because if that's 001, then yeah. So that may well have been one of those days, as mentioned, where there's two trains working on the branch. And passing through Middleton. And Carrick Tool. Now this is a double header um, with two GMs departing 
in the very early hours of Middleton Station, hence <laughs> why it's so dark, but it's one of the few uh, workings uh, that exists uh, on film. Uh, so that was the 17th of May, 9, uh, was it 29th of October, 1987, 151 and 188, 10 Mark IIs, a knock special from Middleton to Claire Morris. And then we see it joining the main line at Cove Junction. This is Loco 176, recorded uh, doing a similar manoeuvre with the rail, to rail train at Killa. Um, and from, as far as we know, this is probably one of the only workings of an IOR liveried uh, GM diesel uh, to have run as far as Killa. So this is recorded between Killa and Yall. So it's Loco 176, taken around 19... 88 slash 89. This is on a different day now, taken during summertime. I think this was 6 of July, 19, um, was it? 9, 22nd July, 1989. I think it's local 147. Uh, again, recovering rails, I think in the Cove Junction Carrick Tool section. and then um, joining the main line at Cove Junction, having run round. So that concludes the first um, films of Joe's that we've shown tonight. I'm going to bring up what is called the Dublin Southeastern film. So this is stepping a little bit further back in time to the early 1970s. And we're going to start off at Sydney Parade and work our way down to Dublin Southeastern, down to Rossler Harbour before cutting across uh, to Waterford. So at the beginning of this, we have a cameo from Joe himself at Sydney Parade Station. And you have a down passenger working from Dublin, passing through with B174. Sydney Parade had closed in 1960, but it was reopened in June 1972. And I believe this well have been um, first uh, down passenger working to serve the station, um, an AEC rail car set led by 2635, 1352, 1357 and 2628. So that was the 755 Connolly Station to Bray, 6th of June 1972, another down passenger working and another AEC rail car set. And Joe again with the two cameras. Probably one had negative film, the other um, cook at color transparency. Near the station buildings at Sydney Parade, which were also uh, cosmetically restored uh, for the reopening. That's B201 class, uh, number B201 itself. Uh, so the first member of that. Uh, the B201 class. It was um, unfortunately it was destroyed not long after this shot was taken at Mike Gates, um, August 1973, when it was destroyed by bomb. Uh, when it was working, a uh, goods working up around the border area between Dundalk and Nuri. That's a down passenger working hall by A60 or And as you can see, we're really uh, in the the black and tan era of CIE compared to the last film. B227. Uh, the train is passing beneath um, a Great Southern and Western Railway style footbridge. I think this was relocated from the, the former station at Sandy Mount. But it would have come from a GSWR station, probably on the Dublin Cork main line. That's an up passenger working with B224. And these shots, they really give an idea of the sort of suburban passenger workings in the Dublin area as it was in the late 60s, early 70s. So, an AEC rail car set heading towards the city. Uh, the other station that was reopened around this time was Booterstown. This station had closed in 1960. 
was reopening uh, was announced in June 1973, but it didn't open until March 1975. And by this stage, in the mid-70s, we had the push-pull trains. So the AC rail cars had been converted to push-pull working, as you can see in this shot, with a B201 class on the rear of the train. Seen departing Booterstown for Dublin City, and that's one of the 1936 Great Southern Railway's uh, colour light signals. And these survived until the DART uh, scheme came about in 1983 when they were replaced. Mm, down passenger working again. Uh, the station had automatic ticket barriers, as you can see in that shot. And a down passenger working. Again, with a re-engine B201 class, I think number 220, 225. Uh, recently repainted into the super train livery. Whereas B220 is in the black and tan livery. Working a push-pull train, as you can see in this shot. up passenger train and a down train headed by 121 class diesel which they say that was probably Rosslare Harbour bound that's B208 providing the, the power on the rear of a push pull set Ships may well have been taken on the day the station reopened, 3rd of March 1975. There's Joe again. B209. Towards the end of 1975, B209 was allocated um, onto the Loch Ray branch. So that, that engine's more associated with the Loch Ray branch in County Galway. Light engine, B174. He may well have been working light engine to somewhere like Shelton Abbey to work a fertilizer train. You'll see also in these shots and the formation of the trains, uh, the four wheel or slash six wheel um, um, uh, heating vans. There's an up push pull set passing through Booterstown. And that's followed by a similar train, but made up of ordinary stock. And again, with one of the four wheel heating vans at the front and rear. This time a GM diesel working an up passenger, I think B143. That had a six wheel uh, heating van behind the engine. Whereas the one on the rear is a four wheel van. Now we move to Wicklow, and that's Wicklow Moora, temporary ter terminus of suburban trains, uh, which opened, I think, in the late 1969 and was used up until the early 70s. So that's B143, I think it is, working a down passenger suburban train to Wicklow Moora, and it's captured at Ballygannon, south of Greystones. That's Bray Head in the background. And you'll see there's realignment taking place at Valley Gannon. B122 with an up train from Rosslare Harbour. So this was all coastal defence work. So that's the original formation at Valley Gannon and that's the new alignment that's been constructed slightly inland. These were all shot around 1970. Now that, that's B-176, I think B-192, after they collided 
head on at Rosslare Strand on the 13th of August 1974. And they were more or less train was more or less uh, brought up to Wexford and later worked to Dublin. Um, it was a late running 1830 train from Rosslare Harbour that collided with the 1600 X Limerick. That previous shot, of course, was an up passenger train along Wexford Quays, and now we see a down passenger departing Rosslare Strand. Up passenger working, I think B149, and a train from the Limerick direction um, arrives into Rosslare Strand. Loco 172. And then we have a down passenger train from Dublin, hauled by A13 or. And then, seen a little while later, to return working again at Rossler Strand, but heading back to Dublin. There's some passenger train passengers waiting for the return working from Rosslare Harbour back to Limerick. And this is the small station at Kilran between Rosslare Harbour and Rosslare Strand. This is taken around October 1970, just before the station closed. C class. C229 working the local passenger work working from Rosslare Harbour up to Wexford. And you can see it was mainly used I think, by uh, school children in the area. And now we have a down passenger train I think from Dublin hauled by B135. You see on the left Kilran had a beat siding. You can see some, some laden beat. Of course this was taken around autumn 1970. The station was demolished in August 1971, but B traffic continued to be handled at the site until March 1977. Here's a pickup goods from Rosslare Harbour, hauled by B168, and that was followed by a down passenger working, I think from Dublin. That's some of the school children from the area who availed of the local service. And here we have Joe capturing a lovely shot of B135 on its return working with a farmer delivering uh, a tractor, tractor load of beef to the station. Then C229 again, with a local passenger working from Rosslare Harbour to Wexford. I think that's a Limerick bound train. That's followed by another 121 class hauled train with B123. And this is Rossler Harbour, or more accurately, it's Ballygiri. I think this temporarily uh, replaced Kilran after it, it had closed. Um, the 1989 built Rosslare Harbour Station was built just adjacent to Ballygiri. And then we move across to the Waterford area to New Ross. And here we have the local goods working from Waterford arriving into New Ross with a mix of sundry vans and open wagons. This was taken on the last day of regular goods working from Waterford to Neuros, 3rd of September 1976. The true route from Waterford to Neuros across to McMine Junction that had closed the passenger traffic beyond Neuros in 1963. But the branch from Waterford to New Ross remained open for goods traffic uh, for sundries mainly until 1976, but it continued for freight 
until 1995. The train would usually leave Waterford at 11.30 using an engine off the 8.10 train from Dublin Euston, returning to Waterford about two hours later. As you can see here, the E177 heading past the former passenger platform uh, with exploding fog signals indicating the last working. And the same train is captured by Joe arriving into Waterford, shot just adjacent to Waterford East Signal Cabin, which is just out of sight to the right. And that concludes the first half of tonight's uh, film show. So I hope you enjoyed those two films of Joe's. And in the second half, we'll head down to Limerick and Kerry. On the Silver Mines branch, which is a branch line off the Ballybrophy uh, to Limerick line, uh, was opened in December 1966 for ore traffic, specifically varieties traffic from silver mines to foins. This is a permanent way train on the branch uh, using the Canal Street steam crane. I've searched a lot of the journals and I haven't quite established what particular working uh, this was, but he seems to be collecting redundant pipes laid alongside the track. On the same day that Joe shot this, we have O O thirty seven arriving with an empty varieties train from the Limerick direction. Shot in the mid 1980s, probably around 1984, 85. There we can see the Canal Street crane lifting up those redundant pipes. I believe the carriage is number 507A, an ex Great Southern and Western Railway uh, carriage. So 037, departing Silver Mines with its laden varieties. And a similar train passing through Bird Hill. And the junction with the Silver Mines branch was located between Bird Hill and Nina. Now this is an empty uh, or laden um, shale train from Kilmastulla heading to Limerick. And you can see the permanent way train that we saw in the Silver Mines branch is on the right. The smoke you can see was emanating from the steam crane. But this shot is from a year or two earlier and shows the permanent way work being installed for the siding at Kilmastulla. It's an A-class and I think it's the, again, it might be the Canal Street or Limerick um, Canal Street crane. And you'll see that the included uh, in this formation is a rather ancient looking, I think Midland Great Western Railway six wheel carriage uh, dating from the Victorian era. This is taken down in summer 1982 when work on the siding was well advanced. And we have a ballast train from Limerick passing through Kilmastulla. And the road you see in the background, that was the old main road from Dublin to Limerick. And empty varieties train passing Kilmastulla, heading back towards Silver Mines. And what goes out empty comes back laden. So here's the return working, heading to the Port of Foynes. 
So again, shot around summer 1982, because the sighting itself, we know from the journal, was commissioned on the 29th of August, 82. And here we see another uh, operation with the, the Canal Street crane. I say Joe was a great uh, at uh, recording the, the men at work, the permanent way men at work. Uh, so we've lots and lots of interesting shots showing the actual work taking place. Loco 047. To accommodate the siding, the main running line was actually slewed to the left, as you can see in this shot. And then a down passenger working from the Dublin direction. Oh, by an 071 class and a fairly lengthy train. Um, totally uh, unlike the sort of two car rail car sets you get on the branch line nowadays. And you can see the turnout on the right leading into the quarry site. Um, this is a goat at Anacotti station, uh, a passenger working, I think, heading for Limerick. Anacotti had the distinction of one of the shortest platforms in Munster. I think it was only 30 feet long. Again, another permanent way working, dropping rails at Kilmastulla, this time hauled by a re engined C class. I think a C230 or Loco 234. They were quite dirty um, around the number area because they would have been working. Um, suburban push-pull trains that we saw earlier and as such the dirt tended to accumulate uh, on, on the cab fronts particularly when the engine was uh, facing back into the uh, uh, push-pull carriages so that's a return working having dropped the rails heading back up the branch towards Nina, Ross Cray and Bally Brophy and again another down passenger working from the Dublin direction I think called by 088 I'm not sure if they may well have been possible um, diversions running via the Nina branch um, to avoid uh, works on the main Dublin Cork line, because there were, of course, two ways of getting to Limerick, the other being via Limerick Junction. So we have a ballast train that's come out to the siding to drop fresh stone, all by Loco 170, and it's propelling back into the siding, into the quarry, which was quite a sharp turnout, as you can see. And that's the plough van doing its work. That's one of the great Southern and Western Railway era plough vans. And that's followed by a ballast tamper. And again, another uh, down passenger working. Here we have some interesting shots in the siding itself at Kilmastola. This is testing the way bridge in the siding. See, so it's a flat wagon with a concrete block on it. But here we have the, the, the flat wagon along with two of the new shale wagons used for the shale traffic itself. They were built in Inchicore Works and they were turned out in that light blue livery. Um, I think on the same day, we have, I think, 184 again with a ballast train. And that too propelled into the siding, as you can see. And you can see the, the other train that we saw is right up at the loading bank. So we have two trains in Kilmastulla siding. And 184 dropping its stone on the run round loop. I'm not sure whether the train worked back to Limerick with the plough van <laughs> in that particular formation, but um, certainly it's a bit of an unusual uh, 
departure. And then back in the siding, and you'll see that the loco propels the two shale wagons up to the way bridge. And that's a laden varieties that was just glimpsed passing on the main line. And so that particular trial working heads back to Limerick. Two shale wagons, 20 foot flat and 30 ton brake fan. And this is a view of 024 from the steps of Bird Hill Signal Cabin with an empty variety is heading towards Silver Mines. Um, Bird Hill Signal Cabin, as you can see, that's the panel for the shale siding. It controlled the siding remotely using that panel. We have an empty shale working, may well have been one of the first workings, heading towards Kilmastulla and propelling into the siding. Probably taken around September 1982, which is when the traffic commenced. And there were three train loads of shale to Castlemonger's factory in Limerick, departing Kilmastulla at 12.10, 17.10 and 21.40. And the run running time to Limerick was 32 minutes, so it was a fairly quick turnaround. And we see the loco running round. It's now a laden shale train and will propel the wagons backwards up to the head shunt before departing south to Limerick. As you can see, the sun has come out just in time for Joe to capture this particular shot. And now we see the train passing Limerick check signal cabin, heading onto the line to Castlemonger cement factory. This is just shot beyond Limerick Check, heading towards the factory at Carey's Road. And approaching Ross Brian level crossing. The line in the foreground is the one to Foynes. Originally, it was just a single track up to the junction point with cement branch, but in December 1966, a separate line was constructed uh, to serve the cement factory, which ran parallel to the line serving Foynes. And here we have 186 in Castle Mongret, and you can see the wagons being tipped using the tippler on the, in the factory site. And then they were more or less uh, dropped by gravity into a head shunt and then use a mule then I think was used to connect the wagons up again. And that's Balancura level crossing uh, taken on the cement branch. Um, this level crossing has since been replaced um, by a fairly big road bridge. Um, but of course the shale traffic unfortunately to Castlemonger that ceased uh, in 2009. The last train ran in 11th of December 2009 and Kilmastulla was disconnected uh, later. That's a bag cement train heading towards the factory. And now we're looking from the footbridge at Carey's Road in Limerick. Laden varieties train from Silver Mines to Foynes with the Castle Mungert line in the foreground and Carey's Road Yard in the background. An empty gypsum train from Castlemonger, approaching Carey's Road, and that train would work all the way back up the main line to Dublin and onwards to Drogheda and Navan and Kingscourt, which is where the uh, gypsum was sourced from. And now we see a laden shale train again on the line serving Castlemonger. Uh, 
Carey's Road, as you can see, there are still sidings uh, in situ around this time, 1982-83. Formerly, the line, there was a direct line into Limerick Station, but that was removed after passenger traffic over the North Kerry line was withdrawn in 1963. And that's an empty varieties passing Carey's Road. And that's Ross Breen Gates in the background. And that's followed by the empty working of the shale train heading back to Castle uh, Kilmastulla. A brake fan is included on that particular uh, rake of varieties. Um, I think there was used to operate the level crossing on the Silver Mines branch. Now, this is actually not one of Joe's films, but by Tony Price. Uh, it just appropriately is the sequence on the North Kerry showing the last regular goods working to Newcastle West, all by GM 189. And it's capped first, firstly um, unloading sundries here at Adair. Twenty ninth of November, nineteen seventy four. The train left Limerick at twelve thirty and served Adair as well as Ratkeel before arriving into Newcastle West. So that's departing Adair. and arriving into Newcastle West. And regular goods trains between Newcastle West and Listowel that have been withdrawn uh, I think in December 1972. So there was no regular workings over the whole of the North Kerry. You just had these feeder goods services serving Newcastle West on one side uh, from the Limerick direction and Listowel being served from the Tralee direction by this time. See 189 running round this train. As you can see, it was a pretty wet, wet day, uh, November, as, as, as it was low, very low light, but Tony has managed quite well in that particular shot. Now back to Joe's films, after that brief in interlude of Tony Price's films, this was Patrick's Well. And we have the other ore traffic, uh, was a mogul served for the mogul company, uh, that was also sourced um, or from silver mines to the port of Foynes. It's passing through Patrick's Well. The line on the right, which looks very rusty and it's to the left in this particular shot, that was the former line to Charleville uh, via Broome. But that had closed to regular goods traffic in 1967 and was lifted subsequently afterwards. But a stub was kept as you can see here at Patrick's Well. That's an up uh, Foynes to Drogheda oil train hauled by a GM diesel. And that's followed by a laden varieties train from Silver Mines to Foynes. And Patrick's Well cabin, that closed at the end of July, 1983. 
um, leaving Ballangran as the only signal cabin between Limerick and Foynes. Of course, uh, in recent months, there's been massive clearances of the vegetation uh, along the Foynes branch in preparation um, for its rebuilding and reopening. This is Ballangran Junction. This is where the Foynes branch joined the North Kerry proper. And here we have an A-class with one of those mogul ore trains heading for Foynes, hauled by O32. You can see on the line serving the North Kerry, there's a Varieties ore train, which I believe was probably shunted into the North, the North Kerry line to allow uh, this crossing to take place. The mogul traffic ceased around 1982. And this is 043 with a permanent way train at Askeaton on the Foynes branch. There was a derailment uh, around this time in the mid 1980s on the branch. And you can see 043 is dropping off um, new sleepers to repair the track. You can see that's some of the damage that was done to the permanent way. It was a case where a wagon had become derailed and it just destroyed quite a, a number of sleepers over a long section at Askeaton. And this is a laden silver mines train arriving into Foynes itself, all by O49. And was usual practice, the train was split, I think, into two or three sections and then propelled to an unloading bay uh, where a JCB pushed the varieties or onto a conveyor belt where it was subsequently was loaded onto a waiting ship. Now back at Ballon Grand Junction now we're going to take a trip over the North Kerry with Loco 209 on the annual Weeds Brain train. June 1982. A Drogheda to Foynes oil train passing. before 209 takes its epic journey over to North Kerry, which was by this time, parts of the permanent way were quite overgrown, as you'll see. So 209 departs, Ballangran, complete with reeds, weed spraying boards. Arriving into Newcastle West. And you can see 209 has picked up um, a branch or two uh, along the way. And having run round, the train then departs west towards Tralee. And Joe captured the train at the classic location at Barna. and passing through Listowel. Approaching Abbey Dorney. Obviously the, the crew have managed to dislodge uh, some of the branches.
and approaching Tralee Station, passing over Edward Street level crossing. So June 1982. And on a very wet, miserable day, Joe captured another weed spray working over the North Kerry. This time with Loco 175, 18th of May 1983. I believe this was the last, second last working of the weed sprayer over the North Kerry line between Limerick and Tralee. So captured passing through the former station at Abbey Field before slowing to enable Joe to get a picture at Listowel. You can see the station and platform very forlorn looking. For whatever reason, the weed sprayer over the North Kerry always seemed to coincide during the summer on a very wet day. And Joe captures the train having arrived into the North Kerry Yard in Tralee before crosses over Edward Street level crossing into Tralee Station proper. And so 175 proceeds to shunt the Weedsbury train into the bay platform on the Killarney side of Tralee Station. So there was just one more spray working over the line the year after that, and that was hauled by Loco 172 in May 1984. So that was part one of the railways of uh, Limerick and Kerry. Okay, so we're going to stay in the Trilly area just for the moment, and we're going to open with this shot of an inspection car trip over the FINA branch, which was made on the 28th of January 1987. It was operated, I think, to evaluate the condition of the track um, for plans by the former Great Southern uh, Railway Preservation Society, uh, who had, had aspirations to run uh, steam specials over the FINA branch. So it's one of the CIE red van style inspection cars which dated from 1964 and we see it passing through the North Kerry Yard in Tralee at Rock Street level crossing before it takes to Fiena branch the line on the left is to Fiena the one on the right is the North Kerry proper to Newcastle West and Limerick so you can see the inspection car takes to Fiena branch and is captured by Joe passing over uh, a bridge just at Kilfenora, one of the few rail over bridges on the Fiena branch. This, I am fairly sure, was the last rail working over the Fiena branch, um, after which the line fell completely into a this uh, disrepair and was actually lifted then during 2018 2019 in preparation to be converted into a greenway so here we see the inspection car arriving into Phoenix.
and then Joe hopped on the rail car itself and captured some of these scenes of the return working to Tralee along the branch. And here we join the North Kerry line and then passing through the North Kerry yard before going over Edward Street level crossing at Tralee station. And this is Ballon Grand Junction, which we saw in the previous film, but this was taken uh, when the signal cabin was being decommissioned. 12th of January 1988, that's a fertilizer train heading for Foynes, and that's followed by an up coal and oil train from Foynes, working all the way up to Ballina for the Asahi textile plant, which was located at Kilala. As part of the work of closing the signal cabin, the main running line was slewed over onto the North Kerry side of the station, which you'll see in a second. That's 055 with an empty ore train heading to Silver Mines. That's the turnout for the North Kerry line to Newcastle West, and you can see uh, the home signal being removed. And you can see then the track is being repositioned. And the semaphore arms are being removed. And what may have been one of the last, uh, or no, not the last, but uh, the first um, ore train to make use of the new formation through the station. Laden varieties heading for foins. That was followed by a fertilizer working. And you can see the disconnected junction now with Newcastle West in the foreground. That was taking up the track, which was used by trains, um, would have been used by trains on the foin, heading towards foins, but as mentioned, the track was realigned to the opposite side of the station. So that train that we saw earlier, this laden silver mines train, returns empty. And around this time, they started uh, track lifting on the North Kerry line. This is Foynes, and we can see a coal and oil train being loaded with coal, uh, coal from the port of Foynes. Uh, there is a specific loading bank or pad area where, where the, the coal was loaded onto 20 foot containers. That's Loco 042 arriving in from Silver Mines. passing the coal and oil train, which was hauled by 014. So that's departing on its long journey all the way up to Ballina, which would have taken the train up the Western Rail Corridor by Attenry, Chum, and so on. Now this is the Foynes Phoenix Rail Tour hauled by uh, locals 127 and 163 from Dublin Connolly. Uh, had originated in Belfast, and this was heading to Foynes. It's captured by Joe, uh, passing through Port Arlington, 18th of May, 1991. And as you can see, it's a mix of Northern Ireland Railways and Irish Rail stock. 170 was the engine that brought the rail tour to Foynes. It was organized by Southern Rail Tours and it's seen departing points.
probably the only time in a, a Northern Ireland railway stock was seen in fines on this particular day. So an unusual working. Uh, these were trial trains of grain uh, which were operating from Foynes to Port Leash uh, around June 1990. Uh, on this particular day, 054 was also in uh, Foynes uh, shunting its varieties train. I think the specific date for this particular uh, working was the 3rd of September 1991. Local 150 with three uh, grain containers which were working up to, um, I think, the Avamore facility in Port Leash. Another traffic that was handled at Foynes was molasses. This traffic began in 1993 using converted oil wagons. So it was not unusual to have two trains in Foynes together at the same time. So that was a laden varieties arriving, while 005 departs with a coal, coal train to Ballina. Um, the Asahi traffic, uh, these coal and oil workings, these ceased in 1997. That's 015, splitting its varieties train ready for unloading. I think that's uh, railway photographer Richard Wall taking a video of the workings. And there's the molasses wagons. And this is Tralee. A shot taken around the late 1970s, 1977-78, when the station was being modernised uh, with new platform and colour light signals. I'm not sure whether health and safety would allow passengers to disembark on a semi-constructed <laughs> uh, platform. I think that's 047, departing Tralee with Mark II stock, uh, Tralee to Dublin working. And you can see the bay platform is being rebuilt. Uh, I think it was extended um, to accommodate uh, longer trains because the original bay platform was much shorter. And that passenger train was followed by a goods working hauled by GM Diesel. I think Tralee was one of the last destinations, a little bit like Yall that we saw earlier, that still handled um, loose coupled stock up until the end of the 1970s. That's Loco 142 with the Limerick steam crane, assisting with the uh, laying new panels and points uh, in the station yard. That's 001 with a train of bag cement being unloaded in the freight siding. And as you can see, the yard was extremely busy with um, freight traffic. I think that's the Canal Street steam crane on this particular occasion, uh, lifting a buffer stop out of uh, a permanent way wagon. I think that's the buffer stop that existed just short of Edward Street level crossing. 017 arrives in from the Killarney direction. And you can see this stage progresses well at, at an advanced stage with the new platform. As mentioned, the semaphore signals, these were replaced by 
color light signals and you can actually see them being installed here now. One sixty nine departing the bay platform at Tralee Station, heading back with a branch working to Mallow. Double O one class shunting freight wagons, and then we have a single one twenty one class this time, assisting with the permanent way work. And a freight working from the Killarney direction arrives in with bogey flat wagons. And here we see O34 helping to install the canopy uh, at the end of the platform, as well as a track panel. <laughs> and the canopy is erected using a forklift. And the eagle-eyed people would have spotted the Denny container, uh, the red and white, red uh, and white blue Den Denny container, which was a particular traffic that was handled for Denny uh, in Tralee. And you can see men on the platform uh, removing the semaphore signal and uh, the arms on it there we go and the old semaphores are replaced and you can see now the color light signals have been commissioned as 056 arrives in from the Killarney direction And we have an 071 class, and it's 072. Uh, departing Tralee with Mark II stock. So again, these were all shot around 9th, September 1978. Uh, kind of unusual there with the generator van and a standard carriage and uh, just a, a good, a, a, good um, a brake carriage on that particular formation. We have O25. I think I wonder if they might actually be TPO vehicles. So O75, I think it is departing with a fairly long train heading out of um, Tralee Station. Again, this was taken just a few days previous to the other shots. As you can see, the semaphore signal was still in use at this time. And that's followed by a train of Mark II stock. And as you can see with this particular formation again, uh, just an ordinary carriage was attached onto the rear of that particular train. And 
and 071, the class leader, pictured running around his train, heading across Edward Street level crossing. That's followed by a shot of 072 arriving into the bay platform. And the pilot engine in Tralee on this particular day was 133. And at this stage, you can see the canopy was nearing completion. We're just heading out of Tralee now. And this is a shot of a permanent way uh, work on a bridge near Farron 4. 040 with a goods working. As mentioned, um, Tralee was one of the last places still to be served uh, with loose coupled sundries wagons, as this train shows. Shot around late 1977, I think it was. That's the bridge itself. I think it's somewhere between Far and Four and Tralee. And that was that particular goods working was followed by O fifty one with a passenger train. There's obviously as you can see there is a speed restriction over the work. And one of the Dutch fans, as they were called, on the rear of the train. And Joe just captured this view from a permanent way train, and that's the Canal Street um, steam crane. But here we have Baron 4 co-op siding with a fertilizer train being shunted into the siding. That was installed in October 1977. And again, around the same time, 1977-78, the turnouts just outside Killarney Station are being renewed in this particular shot. I think again, using the Canal Street crane. And two GMs are assisting with the work on this occasion. And that's Killarney check platform that you see on the right. And that's 073 arriving from the Mallow direction. Uh, probably, probably worked all the way from Dublin. And you can see the Craven uh, carriage there is a first class one. You can see the number one on the doors. And after visiting the station, um, 073 has propelled into the siding at Killarney Check and I think heads onwards to Tralee. Yeah, and that's Killarney Station off to the left. <laughs> See in this shot that Joe got, uh, there was a bit of a mishap with uh, a bag cement wagon, which probably caused a big headache because because it meant the trains couldn't really um, access uh, Killarney Station with that wagon just sitting there. Yeah, it derailed in a rather awkward spot. 
So I think trains on this particular day were just bypassing Killarney Station altogether. You can see the remainder of the cement train is in the background. Now, I have speeded up this particular section of the film because we'd be here all night watching the, <laughs> the crane lifted up. You can get an idea of what's happening. So the wagon is re-railed. And on this particular day in Killarney, I think it may well have been a Munster Gay, uh, Gaelic football final because um, there are six specials run to Killarney, 24th of July. 1977 so you'll see a whole variety of trains um, arriving into Killarney that's what I think this particular day is so here's the first train headed by two GMs and he's arriving into the check platform area into the head shunt where he'll propel them back into the station As you can see, they're propelling back as Killarney, as, as many people will know, is more or less like a terminus station. And all trains to and from Trulli have to reverse in and out of the, uh, the, the two platforms. So here's 086 arriving in from the Trulli direction. The man there on the left attempted to close that door. I don't know why it's open in that particular carriage. I think that may well be a couple of football fans visible in that shot. And amongst all the 071s and GMs, we have an A-class hall train. I think 035. And you can see in the background, there's a train already in the head shunt. And there's all the specials, which are making use of the goods yard in Killarney. Of course, in later years, uh, the track was the yard, the yard was completely rationalised in Killarney, uh, so it wouldn't be possible to run as many specials as it was back back in 1977. Uh, this is Limerick Junction NIR 112, working the uh, uh, Dublin Euston and Tralee train, um, 20, around May 1986, I believe. 112 worked several trains between. Dublin and Tralee. I think maybe testing uh, radio communication. I'm not too sure. Um, but Joe captures 112 arriving into Killarney and then he has this master shot of the train working the 730 from Tralee to Euston, departing Killarney. With Mark III stock. Which those carriages were only just a couple of years old at this time. And so that brings a close to tonight's film show. So I hope you enjoy those films of Joe's. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's plenty of material there that Joe captured around the late 1970s. So it's not just the early, late 60s, early 70s that he captured, but nonetheless, there's still many films uh, that I've yet to digitize, which I hope to show in due course. And again, as ever, I'd like to acknowledge the generosity of the St. Ledger family for donating Joe's films to the society so we can have these particular enjoyable nights uh, tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Jack Aaron. Excellent presentation, as always. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Certainly hope everyone else on the meeting tonight did. Um, one great thing about Joe was that he, as 
he also was able to record every every day um, mm-hmm. activities on the railways. He certainly captured all the the new unique and one off things like that, from derailments to line closures to lifting trains to absolutely stations yeah. getting built. So it's a great variety and, and diversity of things there. But I uh, was uh, ex- excellent show, lovely shot there at ten as well. But with the one 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 yeah, class leaving yeah. journey on the. Imagine if that. Imagine if that was to happen tomorrow. How many of us would go out to photograph? Oh, it, you think? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I really was excellent. I really enjoyed that. So for the next.